Hi everybody. So in science today, we're going to do two things together. The first thing is I want to check back on the plant that we replanted together. Do you remember um, a couple times ago, I showed you that I replanted this one with many different plants that were growing. So I want to talk about that. But then the other thing is I want to take a look at the whole garden and give you an update to show you how each of the plants are doing and what they look like right now, okay? So the first thing is I wanted to show you or tell you a little bit more about this plant that we did. So I'm gonna put it over here just so you can see it. I'll give you a close up soon. So a really special thing was happening with this plant. Um, I learned, I didn't know this actually, I learned recently that this putting certain plants together is actually a really, really special thing. And it, this is not a new idea. It's a really old idea. And there, it was discovered by the Native Americans or indigenous people. Do you know who those people are? Those are the people that were in the United States before anybody else. They were the first people to live here. And they were good at so many things. A few of the things they were really good at was hunting and growing crops, growing plants, and using the land, everything that they had around them to make anything that they needed. They were really good at that. One of the many things that we learned from them with planting is that they found out that planting corn and squash and beans together is a really special combination. And they called that the three sisters, which is very, very special. So the corn grows up really tall. The peas can wrap around it to help them grow too. And then um, the squash, remember we don't have squash, we just pretend it is for now. The squash has really big leaves that grow very low to the ground. And all of them help each other for different reasons. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you a brand new word. It's kind of a big word, it's a little bit complicated, but I know you can do it. You ready? <laughs> the word is symbiotic. Here, I'll spell it out here. Sem -bi -otic. You try. Yes, that's great. So, do you know what symbiotic means? It basically means like a friendship when things help each other. Something, uh, two things or more can have things that they all need help with. So, and that's just like these plants that we've learned. The corn grows really tall, and guess who needs something tall? The peas, they need to wrap around something to help it grow taller, otherwise they kind of fall down, right? And then the squash, remember we don't have squash, but um, the bush bean is kind of like squash, a little bit. But the squash, when you plant that with the corn and the peas, is really special for a few reasons. One of the things it does is it makes leaves that are really big and wide, and they grow low to the ground. And that's special because that makes it really shady when the plants are growing outside. And when it's shady like that, that means that weeds don't grow as much, which are like plants that make growing harder. So weeds don't grow as much, and it keeps the soil like moist and not dry. So then it makes the peas and the corn able to grow even better because they need that kind of moisture, that water in the soil for more time. And the last thing that the squash does is those big leaves that it can grow are also a little bit spiky. So that makes it so raccoons specifically have a hard time getting in because it kind of pokes them and makes them not eat it. Because some of the animals want to come and munch, munch, munch on all these crops. So having the corn and the peas and the squash growing together, they're the sister plants and they have a symbiotic relationship. And I think it is one of the most special things. So that's something that the Native Americans or the indigenous people figured out all by themselves and they taught us that too. One of the many things they taught us. Okay, so we did the first thing and now let's take a look at our garden and see how everything's growing, okay? All right, so over here, we have our three plants together. The bush bean is right here. You can kind of see it. It's the one with the big leaves. I'll turn this around. Oof, the corn's in the way. So you have the bush bean with these really beautiful, large leaves. You can, you can see those veins also. Wow. So the bush bean is growing, uh, and then here's the corn growing really tall. Look how tall that's getting. Wow. 
and you have the peas here too. So you see the little tendrils there. So a few things that I was noticing about this is that, look at this, this is corn over here also, but do you think it's doing as well as the other corn? Not quite, right? I actually planted three of our corn stalks. Here's one. Here is two over here in the back. And there's the third one. So to my surprise also, the corn is just doing really well in one spot. I'm watering it and everything, but that's just the way it's going for now. We'll try to give it some more sun. And look, the peas are doing a really good job at trying to hold on. You see them over there? It's really wrapped itself around that corn, but this corn is not going anywhere. Maybe it'll start reaching for something else soon. And then it looks like the bush bean is also doing a really great job, just like squash does. Remember, it's not quite the same. It's kind of having its big leaves lower down, but the bush bean is not spiky like the squash. Oh, I forgot to tell you, over here I, I planted some of our radish in the corners. But right now it's looking like the radish is not doing so great. It looks a little bit wilted, but that's all right. We'll keep giving it some water and some more sun and hopefully it'll get a little bit better. And so down here, do you remember, I put rocks because I wanted to separate it. So I made it a little bit of a separation so then that there could be a little bit more space for the water to evaporate. That's when the sun hits it and then it turns um, invisible. It turns back into like steam or vapor. You can kind of see some of that vapor right there. It's condensation. So it's almost vapor. So that's helping it grow because otherwise the water gets stuck there like a pool and then it has a hard time um, getting the air that it needs. All right, so that's how this one's doing. So now let's take a look at the peas by themselves. The peas are, look like they're tangled up with the black eyed peas, do you see? So peas again are so good at just finding something to hold on, hold on to, to keep growing. And I put them in the corner here just in case they fall back, they can kind of lean against the wall. So they're getting pretty tall. The black eyed peas, look at them. I really think they're gorgeous. They're growing really, really tall and wide. And over here, we've got the corn by itself. That's still growing pretty tall. One thing I learned about corn too is that, or actually a lot of plants, is if you have too many of them growing together, then it makes it kind of hard for them to get the nutrients, the food, that they need, because otherwise there's too many of them trying to get it at the same time. Like if you have one plate of food and eight people are trying to eat it. Okay, so over here we have bush bean. And the bush bean, look at that, is growing really, really big, and it's really close together still. Here, the corn is in the way, let me move this forward. So look at those. They're really, really, I'm surprised, I didn't think it was gonna get like that. It's very thick. All right, and then over here we have the radish. The radish is not looking so great all around, huh? Let me move that over here. It's a little bit wilted, that's what I'm, I'm noticing. Wilted means that it's like not, uh, so like, like this corn is really straight and looking like it's still growing. But then this corn, you see, is wilted. Like it's bending down, it's not as straight and not looking as strong anymore. Because I remember the last time, or a few times ago, the radish was like um, very healthy looking. It was uh, almost like a, a cloud growing. <laughs> it was very nice. But right now, maybe it needs some more water. It has been very cloudy, as you can tell. So maybe that has something to do with it. And then the clover is slowly but surely getting much taller. Look at that. And then over here, we've got the Shasta daisies and the purple cone flower that you observed. And they're still doing pretty well. I'm wondering when they're gonna bloom. And then last over here, we have 
the wheat and the alfalfa. Look at that alfalfa really growing. And then over here we have the wheat. And I've been noticing it's getting to be um, yellow. And I don't, I need to look into it more. I'm not sure if it's supposed to right now or if that means that it's not getting enough water. But I'm very good at giving it water, so it's new. I'm wondering which way it's gonna go. All right, so those are all our plants together. Aren't you so proud of our garden? It's doing a really nice job, I think. <laughs> so to finish up, um, everybody, I'm interested to hear what you're thinking about the garden, how it's growing. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you have observations that you would like to let me know, you can. Or you can just tell me what you think. I would love to hear what you're wondering about, okay? So let me know your questions or observations or comments, anything you'd like. All right? Looking forward to it.